Hello everyone, Canon Lowe here, getting back to Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet. And I wanted to finish this up uh, a bit earlier, but I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to cover before I finished this project up. And I wanted to make sure that I had gotten this project done, for the most part, by the end of this year. So apparently I haven't recorded this game for four months, so I'm going to be a bit rusty, but I have decided what I wanted to cover in this last part here. Uh, which is the Grandmaster difficulty of the Bullet of Bullets, as well as trying the co-op missions solo that have Levere in them, the, uh, the hardcore missions whatever they're called. So we'll see how this goes. Yeah, because I haven't played this for a while, I'm definitely not... Not used to that, okay then. <laughs> well, and if I don't finish it that's, uh, this, this time, uh, that's not really a big deal. <laughs> I knew it was actually going to be quite difficult because... Even the level 191, even though that I was well in the 200s, I think over 250, it was still semi-difficult. So being at 300, that is definitely something. So just to go over, go over quick, uh, refresh what I have. This is the attributes, and I have a blue rose SMG. With that, and then Ordinal Ray Mark Three Plus on that. So, I mean, for for what I was doing in in the game before doing this uh, Grandmaster thing, like it works plenty fine with basically everything else. It's just in PvP, um, well, pseudo-PvP, I guess. Like, as you can see here, they do a ton of damage. Well, I guess if they're if if I can get headshots on them, they're not too bad. So when when it gets to the final stage of the bullet of bullets, where it's uh, the really wide open field, it's not nearly as bad because then you have a lot more room to maneuver and, and pick your targets. And yeah, if you if you're going for more of a DPS setup, 
it does seem that the snipers pretty much one-shot you, so that's... <laughs> that's also a problem. They got one. Hey, time for the scan. Okay, let's get rid of this sniper over here. Okay, one left. There we go. So I guess I just have to play somewhat passively <laughs> in order to do this. I'm really liking the speed though. I don't recall if my accessories have a void instant death on there or not, so that may be an issue. Yeah, they, they definitely made this difficult if you get caught out, but... But if you have, like, really good accessories that have uh, avoidance and death and, like, regen and stuff, this is actually... I wouldn't say that this is really that bad, but then again, if you already have those, then it kind of trivial trivializes most of the game as is, so... Well, I, th I thought that was a pretty decent attempt. I 
basically got screwed over from the one skill um, that what is it called? So, oh yeah, gun stinger. If if you get caught by that, it basically stops you dead in your tracks. And so, especially with that gravity field there as well, I was basically perfect combination to instantly get me. So let's see what my accessories have. So I have HP recovery and movement speed, and then I have avoid instant death for 60% like that doesn't really do anything. Like it needs to be like 30% or lower in order to be that useful. Uh, uh, unless you're against snipers, so. So overall, um, maybe I'll try once more, uh, but I am going to try the hardcore quest. Okay, I don't think those have anything to do with that co-op counter. That can't be it. Okay. Um, hardcore quests have been added to online co-op quests and hardcore co-op quests. You fight against powerful bosses with up to three other players. Your Arphasis and NPC allies cannot join, and the map will disappear during the quest. Your completion time will be uploaded to the online rankings. So, I think I did mention this in one of my parts in the past that I was under the impression that if you were going to do these hardcore co-op quests, you either had to do it by yourself or with people online. And this confirms that, which kind of... I really don't like that idea, but... Okay, set NPC companions. You can choose up to seven NPC companions who accompany you during online co-op when there are slots available. If you do not choose any NPCs, your companions will be choose chosen at random. Okay. So is that. I probably need to create a room in order to do anything with that, I think. Online PvP counter? Okay. Okay, well, what does it mean by private room settings here? Well, I'll just go with that and see how it goes. Um, well, if I have private room settings on, that should mean that I'm by myself. Is it? Show menu. That NPC companion, so I'll probably want.
Asuna for sure. Sachi is good. Seven's pretty good. Honestly, besides the main four I, I used, I don't really know what these characters really have on them. And Len is considered a tank in this game? Since when? <laughs> what? I thought I thought she was considered a, an assault character, not a tank. Um. Alrighty then. Okay, so apparently I need to accept a quest. Um. Okay, so you do get basically credits for doing these. Wow, 50 diamonds, that's not bad. This is, this is my first time doing this, so that's why I'm being so confused by all of this. Okay, so apparently there are basically this stuff to get credits, and then you have the hardcore, hardcore special invitation. And you do get diamonds for this. But the main reason why you do these hardcore co-op missions is that you can get the Type Z weapons. And what the Type Z weapons do is that they're basically, for the most part, they're better versions of other weapons. So it's basically like a final upgrade, so to speak. And this is where you get some of the best weapons in the game. You can get a sword that, if built correctly, is really overpowered. Um, granted, it's not as overpowered as the Abyssal Dungeon swords. But there's also um, a Type-Z or Golden version of, a, of that semi-automatic shotgun that Alice uses. That is incredibly OP as well and I think you can get them from these I'm not 100% sure maybe that is a Abyssal Dungeon exclusive like the Giga Cedar Sword and the Blue Rose Sword but either way you can get incredibly good weapons from from doing these and each of these I do believe you do have to fight Levere plus a harder version of one of the bosses through the story from well actually most of the story now that I think of it I think they kind of have bosses sprinkled in as kind of mini bosses until you fight the final boss which is very similar to the DLC 4 bosses except harder so let's do that Okay, so we have a quest, and no, I do not want to cancel the quest.
Okay, so you can for sure do this solo. Well, I, I have seen people do it solo, so obviously you can, but... Now, I'm expecting to do very badly on these, so I mean... Don't really expect greatness here. But I did want it to show at least, like, give an idea of what they're like. Because I know that they're a lot different compared to most of the content. Uh, you also get multiple lives. Which I do believe it sounded like counts for your whole team. So if you have someone that keeps dying, well then that can potentially screw you over. Why are these guys a little 75? That's kind of weird. Isn't this supposed to be like 280? Okay, 100. Okay, so is this just kind of like a gauntlet that gives you harder and harder enemies as you go along type of thing? Because we're up to 150 now. Because if I manage to do this solo with without playing the game for quite a while as well as being not nearly as good as the pros in this game, that would be pretty hilarious. Okay, well there's one more somewhere. Or the door just opens, alright. Okay, we're up to 200. I'm honestly kind of surprised that they show like really low enemy, low level enemies here. So far, so good, actually. Get rid of you before you become a problem. Now if I can somehow get them one at a time, that would be really nice. I 
Uh, well, at the very least, they aren't doing super huge damage. Well, not yet. <laughs> Run away! <laughs> but it kind of seemed that they all buffed themselves, and therefore... Because they're healing more than I can damage them, that's a pretty big issue. Okay, I'm not sure how exactly I'm going to do this, especially with them healing. Come on! Sprint, man, sprint! How many asanas do they have? Can I at least get rid of you? Yes, I can. Yeah, this would basically be the perfect moment to use uh, the skill block shot. Uh, are they just all Asuna and then one Yamakaze? What, what is going on here? Yeah, I think there, it's just literally Asuna. Asuna's and then one Yamakaze. <laughs> okay, I, <laughs> I I I think that's enough of the uh, enough of the showcase on that specific one. Um, let's try the level three, one of the level 300 ones. What does it mean by normal? So these are supposedly the easier ones. You can get some materials, I guess. Divine Thread. This one right here is actually really good, if you need materials. Because a lot of the higher end outfits require the uh, like dark matter, divine thread, and all that stuff. Ooh, this one right here gives a lot of credits. That's like probably the best credit ones right here. And also, what is the difference between the Alpha, Beta, and Gamma? Are they just different layouts, or...? Also, what is the point of having set NPC companions if they don't even allow you to have them be with you. I'm a bit confused on that. Must be just something that I am not aware of. Or I just skimmed over too fast, I don't know. Yeah, I would say for the last one, uh, the... The skill free shot was is basically a requirement. 
or uh, or at least uh, heavy debuffs because I just don't understand why they had like six asanas that all buff themselves and heal and then had one Yamakaze that basically didn't do anything for himself and therefore he was pretty easy to pick off. And if they didn't heal, I probably could have eventually gotten them, but that would have been really long and drawn out, and that was something that I just didn't really want to uh, put on camera. That that would have that would have been just painful. <laughs> oh come on. Um, okay then. Apparently getting one-shotted by being stomped on, that's new. Yeah, doing this solo, um, especially with the way that I have my character set up, is that one of the ways that it is as this setup is as good as it is, is primarily because in my party I have Sachi, and since she does heavy debuffs uh, in terms of defense and stuff, I do like triple the normal damage. Which helps a lot. But obviously there are better setups as you can imagine. And again being one shotted by stuff. But if you have a uh, avoid instant death 10% and then life regen, you're pretty much unkillable by yourself. Which I don't have. But let's see how far I can get on this one by myself. Before it gets... Oh come on. Really? Stop it. Oh, and then it does damage. Okay, I see how it is. Come on. They do not want to show me their backs, do they? Yeah. 
It's kind of weird that sometimes it does damage and other times it just doesn't. Can I please get rid of one of you? Thank you. that one. Come on, come on, let's... <sighs> this is drawn out as much as... Much more than it should be. Finally. Yeah, even... Even using, like, Viral Shot 1... Even if you, um, yeah, ju just using that skill, which I don't think even has any attribute requirements, that would help tremendously on this. Okay, this door opened. Hey, another one of you. And somehow that hit me twice. Alrighty then. <laughs> yeah, I think that was getting to be a little bit more drawn out than I would have liked, so I do apologize for that. So... So overall, the experience of this stuff is that, first of all, I need better... Uh, accessories, or at least a better accessory, I should say. Because I think the this one right here is basically as good as it's going to get, and it has everything that I want on there. Whereas this one is just kind of a placeholder, honestly. Um, cause what I wanted was avoid instant death, life regen, and then either luck or dexterity, and then movement speed. But accessory farming in this game, to get what you want, is very difficult. So that's kind of like, besides weapons, that's kind of what the end game is in this game, is getting the right accessories to work well with your weapons. 
Because I would say farming weapons is actually not super difficult most of the time. If you can get them easily accessible. Um, for an example, if you, if you want to do the Abyssal Dungeon for their weapons, that can be difficult just because it's in that special environment. As well as these hardcore co-op missions. So if I was doing it with other people that had better stuff than me, um, or at the very least could buff me, or debuff the enemies, it would be significantly better than obviously doing it by myself. So at least we got a bit of a taste for it. And also the, um, whatchamacallit, the... Uh, the Grandmaster Bullet of Bullets. I think I could probably do it. It's just that it would take me multiple tries. And considering how long this video is probably going to be, I really don't want to put that uh, in this video at the end here. So in the future, I may come back to this game to do some extras like for the whole blind let's play thing this is far as far as the series will go um uh, well i mean i guess you could technically sh say that if i go back to the hardcore co-op missions and actually complete one of them which is highly unlikely but if i ever do well then technically i would be doing it blind because i haven't seen past the points you've just seen. Um, or the finishing the last floor of the Abyssal Dungeon would also be something, but I don't really see myself ever really doing that anytime soon. So, as of right now, as of this project, I'd say we, we have finished this one up finally.